Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Our uniform personnel, our turn. Our guard, our the color. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Acting Training Operations Supervisor Dustin Cofield, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies for today's historic graduation. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for the Border Patrol Processing Coordinator, Class 03. At this time, I'd like to introduce the onstage party. Starting on my right is Paul Wayne Farmer, Assistant Chief Patrol Agent, United States Border Patrol Academy. United States Congresswoman Nancy Mace, 1st District, South Carolina, and Carl Landrum, Deputy Chief Patrol Agent of Laredo Sector. <laughs> Please join me in viewing a short video of our graduates and a brief description of the BPPC position and our graduates' time at the Academy. Border Patrol agents deal with detaining and processing several individuals on a daily basis. When the amount of people being detained increases, Border Patrol agents shift from an enforcement role to an administrative role. An idea that was thought of in 2014 was a position that assists Border Patrol agents by doing more of the administrative functions, allowing agents to return to the enforcement aspects of their job. With the help of Congress, the end result is the Border Patrol Processing Coordinator position. The training program is 36 days long, which is equivalent to 288 hours of training. The training consists of law, operations, physical techniques, driving, tactics, 
Spanish, and firearms. These individuals receive a high level of instruction in community first aid and safety, processing individuals, and giving care to detainees. The position has an initial term of 13 months with the possibility of extending up to four years. I'd like to recognize some of the distinguished guests who have joined us for today's special occasion. Fletzy Charleston Site Director, Wayne Anderson. Trade and Cargo Academy Director, Randy Mitchell. Patrol Agent in Charge of El Paso Station, Jeffrey Denisi. Division Chief in Laredo Sector, Juan Benavides. From the Office of Senator Lindsey Graham, Low Country Regional Director, Daniel Head. And from the Office of Senator Tim Scott, Regional Director, Kathy Crawford. We'd also like to recognize the staff members of the United States Border Patrol Academy that were instrumental in the achievements of this class. With all staff members that assisted with class 03, please stand. <laughs> Though many are not here as they are busy instructing another class, we thank you for all of your hard work. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome Congresswoman Nancy Mace to the podium for a few brief remarks. However, before I invite Congresswoman Nancy Mace to the podium, I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. Congresswoman Mace grew up in the Low Country. She is the daughter of a retired Army general and retired school teacher. Before being sworn into, con into Congress, Congresswoman Mace earned accolades as one of the most fiscally conservative members of the South Carolina General Assembly. She's also one of the most pro conservation lawmakers in the state of South Carolina. Congresswoman Mace grew up in Groose Creek, South Carolina. When she dropped out of high school at age 17, her parents said, if you're going to stop going to school, you're gonna start going to work. She immediately became a waitress at the Waffle House on College Park Road in Ladson. The Congresswoman earned her high school diploma in a few months later by taking college classes at Trident Technical College in North Charleston. She graduated magna cum laude from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina, where she was the school's first female graduate from its Corps of Cadets in 1999. In 2004, the Congresswoman earned her master's degree from the University of Georgia. Go dogs! She is the author of the company of In the Company of Men, A Woman at the Citadel, published by Simon and Schuster in 2001. In 2008, Congresswoman Mace started her own company. Her background in business is in technology, PR, and marketing, and more recently commercial real estate before coming to Congress. Congresswoman Mace is the recip recipient of the 2019 Taxpayer Hero Award from the South Carolina Club for Growth. She has a 100% record of voting to lower taxes. Ms. Mace is also the recipient of the Champion Award from the Palmetto Goodwill in her efforts in education and helping those most in need receiving job training. She has a 100% rating with Conservation Voters of South Carolina. The Congresswoman is a single mom of two children, ages 12 and 14. She also has two cats. Tyler and Tiger. The kids now want a dog. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Thank you for that very kind introduction. Uh, I asked before I came here this morning, how, mu how many minutes do I have to speak? Because the worst thing you can do is give a politician a microphone. Um, but, uh, you know, I started from scratch. I, uh, as I was introduced earlier, I dropped out of school and I was 17 and I was a waitress at a Waffle House. I didn't think I'd be alive at the age of 43 today, you know, let alone be a member of Congress. And so my life proves that if you have a dream, you set a few goals, you work hard, you can make it. You all had a dream, you set some goals, you worked hard, and you made it. And I come from a family uh, of military service. I'm the, one of the only members of my family who did not serve in the military. But my, da my dad was in the Army for 28 years and was in two, three tours of combat, two in Vietnam and one in the 1965 coup d'etat of the Dominican Republic. And uh, you know, I learned some tough lessons during some tough times in my life. I learned the value of hard work. I learned the value of service from my family. And I have many members of my family today that are deployed overseas or getting ready to, to deploy or coming back from deployment. And the, the, the career path that you all have chosen is one of service. You have picked up the mantle 
and said, we're going to serve our country. And I can think of no greater honor than to serve the United States of America like you all have chosen to do. So we thank you. I also understand this is the third class of graduates here. You all also are leading the way for other folks that will join the, the Border Patrol after you. And as the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, I can tell you the first few, few classes, they were tough. Same way that you all had it tough. And you all are setting a great example for those that will come after you. And um, my understanding too is that uh, you all will be assigned, assigned to seven different assignments along the border. And so whether you are part of supporting the humanitarian crisis there, or the crisis we have with criminals coming to the border, um, or children that are coming here, you are about to embark on tremendous, tremendous work for one of the greatest countries I can think of no better place to serve. So I'm certainly proud of you, and I hope uh, being in the low country, you have uh, met a lot of good friends, good food, good culture, good cocktails while you're here, and that you remember this beautiful place along the ocean, you'll come back and come back and teach, come back and train, come back and lead. And so um, I thank you as the member of Congress from the 1st Congressional District. The Low Country thanks you, South Carolina thanks you, and your country thanks you. God bless and good luck. Thank you, Congresswoman Mace. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us this morning. We know that you have prior engagements and we welcome your return anytime. It is now my pleasure to introduce Assistant Chief Patrol Agent of the United States Border Patrol Academy, Paul Wayne Farmer. Before I invite Assistant Chief Farmer to the podium, I'd like to tell you a little bit about him. Assistant Chief Patrol Agent Paul Wayne Farmer currently serves as the Assistant Chief Patrol Agent at the United States Border Patrol Academy. Prior to the Academy assignment, Assistant Chief Farmer served as the Patrol Agent in charge of Eureka, Montana. Assistant Chief Farmer entered on duty in 1997 and graduated from Border Patrol Class Hardcore 354 in Charleston, South Carolina. He started his career in Fort Hancock, Texas. He is a nationally registered EMT, and throughout his career, he has been a certified member on a variety of teams, such as the STAR Team, Special Response Team, Four Star, MOT, and Peer Support. In 2006, Assistant Chief Farmer promoted to Supervisory Border Patrol Agent and gained experience working in many locations. He served as a firearms instructor at the United States Border Patrol Academy in Artesia, New Mexico, and as a Supervisory Border Patrol Agent in Bellingham, Washington. While assigned to Blaine Sector, Agent Farmer oversaw the Marine Inter Interdiction Team, the Mountain Operations Team, Use of Force Team, Advanced Training Team, and served as a commander of the Blaine Special Sector Special Operations Detachment. Before the United States Border Patrol, Agent Farmer proudly served in the U.S. Army as an 82nd Airborne Paratrooper and as a graduate of Angelo State University. He is married to his wife and best friend Gina for 28 years, and together they have three children. Ladies and gentlemen, Assistant Chief Patrol Agent Paul Wayne Farmer. Congresswoman, thank you again. We understand you have an engagement down at the Battery. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Class, I'm so proud of y'all. Two months ago, May 14th, I watched y'all get off a bus. Some of you had a look in your eyes, what am I getting myself into? You're here. You made it. About to embark on your next adventure. The border's waiting on you. The job that you're doing is very important. We appreciate that. I graduated Border Patrol Academy right here in Charleston, South Carolina. I remember couldn't wait to get to graduation, get my badge and creds. I've worked so hard for it. Y'all too have worked hard for your badge and creds. I'm proud of you. On behalf of U.S. Border Patrol Academy Chief Jason D. Owens, the entire Academy staff, I want to say congratulations. Thank you for a job well done. As we welcome you to the Border Patrol family, 
I want to remind you of this. When you look in the mirror, be proud of who you see. Be proud of your actions. Check yourself. Make sure that your actions have been honorable. If you always do the right thing, you won't dishonor the Border Patrol family that you've just become a part of. So as I welcome you to this Border Patrol family, I remind you, honor first. Again, congratulations. Good job. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Deputy Chief Patrol Agent of Laredo Sector, Carl Landrum. Before I invite Deputy Chief Landrum to the podium, I would like to tell you a little bit about him. Carl Landrum is Deputy Chief Patrol Agent of the Laredo Sector, U.S. Border Patrol. Deputy Chief Landrum assumed his command at Laredo Sector on December 6, 2020. Laredo Sector covers 84,000 square miles and 136 miles of river in 96 counties from the U.S.-Mexico border to the Texas-Oklahoma-Arkansas borders. With a workforce of over 1,900 employees, Laredo Sector is a viable economic factor providing over $80 million in salaries on an annual basis for the sector's region. The Laredo Sector has one sector complex nine stations, Laredo North, Laredo South, Laredo West, Zapata, Catula, Hebronville, Freer, San Antonio, and Dallas. Deputy Chief Landrum entered on duty with the U.S. Border Patrol in October 1996 as a member of Class 323. He started as a Border Patrol agent at the Brownfield Station and later served as a Supervisory Border Patrol agent in Imperial Beach Station, San Diego Sector. At his, as his career progressed, he promoted in 2003 to serve as a special agent with the Federal Air Marshal Service in New York City. In 2005, he became a supervisory course development instructor at the U.S. Border Patrol Academy. 2007, he was appointed as Assistant Chief Patrol Agent, U.S. Border Patrol Headquarters in Washington, D.C. Deputy Landrum became Patrol Agent in Charge at Catula Border Patrol Station in 2011 helped stand up the South Texas Campaign as the first J-3 Assistant Commander Operations Division. Additionally, in 2012, he promoted a patrol agent in charge of the Laredo North Border Patrol Station. Later, in 2014, he was promoted to Division Chief of the Laredo Sector Headquarters. Deputy Chief Landrum has served as the first Chief of Staff establishing the Department of Homeland Security DHS Task Force West in San Antonio, Texas. In 2016, was promoted to Deputy Chief Patrol Agent of Yuma Sector. As part of the DHS SES Candidate Development Program, Deputy Chief Landrum served as Chief of Staff of the McChrystal Group and was the first ever DHS SES CDP member authorized to complete a development assignment in the private sector. Deputy Chief Landrum attended Baylor University, earned a Bachelor of Science in Information Systems from the University of Phoenix, San Diego, California, holds certificate, certificates from Customs and Border Protection Leadership Institute, DHS SES Candidate Development Program. He earned a Master of Strategic Studies from the U.S. Army War College, Deputy Chief Landrum was the first civilian officer ever selected to attend the Army War College Advanced Strategic Art Program, graduating with honors. Ladies and gentlemen, Deputy Chief Carl Landrum. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. I forgot a lot of that stuff in there, so I'm not, not sure where you guys got so much detailed information about me, but uh, it was a good, it was a good, good reminder. Um, class uh, 03, welcome to today, right? This is the day you've all been you've all been striving for trying to get here. All right, going through a, a pretty robust hiring process, which I'd like to thank each and every one of you for putting yourselves through that initially, and then coming on board when actually offered the opportunity, you said yes. And you stood up not only for the US Border Patrol, which we need you very much, but you stood up for your country. And we really appreciate that, that you did that, and that you came in and that you're subjecting yourself to 
everything these guys put you through over the uh, past two months. So I saw a little bit of the uh, video video earlier that of, of the training you all went through. It was very reminiscent of a lot of the training that, that I also went through. And um, I, I don't know if you caught in there during the introduction, but my, my graduation class was right here in this exact same facility. It was literally almost 25 years ago. I got here in October of 1996, and this facility was brand new. I was the third class to arrive on center. So it was interesting today coming back 25 years later and seeing a lot more landscaping out there, a lot of new buildings out there, a lot of different things out there. And you guys, is, this, is the spider trail still here? Okay, so you guys went through plenty of uh, uh, physical training while you were here. So I was going to use the uh, spider trail if it was if it was still used in the in the terms, but it's something that every border patrol agent remembers about being at the academy in Charleston. So your class number uh, zero three that'll be important um, every time you guys meet anybody like you any place anywhere, and somebody says, "Oh, well, I was a I was a processing coordinator," that's going to be the first thing they ask just like it is with all of us. It's always a class number that actually that actually comes out first and, and that signifies and actually means something. And the, the fact that you guys were class zero three shows that you were in the fight early. You know, you guys you know, re really stepped up when we needed you, right? I think you heard in uh, part of the, uh, part of the uh, speeches earlier that this, this effort started in 2014 to even get this position description you know, here within this organization. And it actually started long before that. As a Border Patrol agent for two decades, we've been asking for this type of a position. So the official effort started in 2014 to actually make it, bring it to fruition, you know, right? But, but it, is, it is a position that we have needed all along. Um, I think you all, the, the, of, of all of you that are here, I think you all are going to seven different places across the Southwest border. And just know this, the places that you're going to, the places that actually have the processing coordinator positions are the places that are hardest hit right now. So not a single one of you are going to a place where, you know what, there's not much going on. You know, this is going to be an easy day at work. You know, we're just going to get through this and, you know, it, it's going to be tough when you're out there. It is absolutely going to be tough. And keep in mind that, you know, a lot of the people that we deal with, right, the overwhelming majority of the people that we deal with are just looking for a better life, all right? The overwhelming majority are not trying to come in and be a threat to the United States, all right? They are human beings like every one of us. And the care and custody of every one of them is, you know, that, that is done in the same way that all of us would care for each other, all right? You're going to see cramped conditions. You're going to see, you know, uh, you know, resource needs while you're out there. You're going to see a lot of things like that. But, but know that your job there is to actually help and to make it better as best, you know, as best as that can actually be. You know, to assist all the border patrol agents that are there with that processing effort, but that care and custody effort that really matters. You know that. Um, Switch the topic on you just a little bit, a little bit just about uh, about ceremonies, all right? I mentioned my ceremony here almost 25 years ago today, and you all are having a great ceremony today, right? We do, within the American culture, we celebrate a lot of things, right? We celebrate a kid's first day to go to school. We celebrate birthdays every year, you know? We celebrate, you know, things like uh, quinceaneras, sweet 16s. We celebrate people going off to college on a first day, right? We even get together in ceremonies like this in honor of the dead, whenever that occurs in and around any of our friends or family. But the important thing about every single ceremony that you're ever at is there's no other one that's just like it. Because all of you that are in this room today will not be in the next ceremony. And the realistic part of it is, is the 43 of you that are graduating today probably will not all be together again. So today is the day. And that's the significance. That's pretty powerful and it should actually resonate with all of you. You've spent the past two months together. 
right? Was it easy? It wasn't just a cakewalk? You guys actually put in some effort, right? Not every one of your classmates made it, right? So it's not given away. Every one of you earned it. You spent the past two months here earning this. You know, be proud of that. Your families should be proud of that too. Right? It's not easy. And hopefully this is just the beginning of an entire career here. All right? There'll be many other opportunities. Opportunities will come up in different ways, in various ways. When an opportunity comes up, take it. You know, right? Accept the opportunity. They're not always easy either. Sometimes you're detailed away from home, you know, to far off locations. Don't know if that's going to happen with the uh, coordinator position, but it could, right? The landscape we work in out there is ever changing. It changes every hour of every day. It's never the same as it was yesterday, right? So opportunities that come up, take them. Opportunities lead to other opportunities, all right? So hope you guys stick with it. Hope you guys are here for an entire career. Like I said, we need each and every one of you. We, we have fought long and hard as an organization to get you all here, to get this position here. And again, I thank you all for stepping up and actually taking the position on. One, one very important thing as I close up though, right? When you all leave here today, remember, go back to your friends and family and thank them too for their support. Not a single one of you could have gotten here or made it through the past two months without that support, wherever it is. Whoever's out there, whoever you all called that night, you know, when you finally got a break from instruction, right? All of that, thank them. They made it possible for you all to be here. And I'm thanking not only you, but I'm thanking all of your friends and family as well for making this possible and contribute to what we're doing here in the U.S. Border Patrol and for the United States of America. So thank you all. Appreciate it. You ready to get the celebration on? Yes, sir. All right. Who's ready to go home? Everybody should see 43 hands right now at least. All right, let's do this. Thank you, Deputy, for those inspiring, encouraging words. We will now move on to the presentation of awards. At this time, we'd like to recognize the section leaders of Class 03 with the award for leadership. Border Patrol Processing Coordinators, Joanna Hernandez and Eduardo Sepulveda, Please come forward. The section leader position carries with it a tremendous amount of additional responsibilities aside from the same training regimen as the rest of the class. The award for leadership commends the section leaders for their leadership, demeanor, and professional attitude. Congratulations on earning the leadership award. Thank you and please be seated. We will now recognize the graduate who has earned the overall academic award. Board Patrol Processing Coordinator, Ismael Martinez, please come forward. The overall academic award signifies the graduate ranks number one amongst their peers in their training. Their performance makes them highly deserving of the honor bestowed by this award. Congratulations on earning the overall academic award. Thank you, Mr. Martinez, and please be seated. Our final award is our Honor First Award, presented on behalf of the Academy staff of the Border Patrol Processing Coordinator Academy. Border Patrol Processing Coordinator, Angel Bravo Serrato, please come forward. This award is given to the individual who embodies the guiding principles of honor and who has demonstrated through their actions a level of integrity and commitment that exemplifies the values of the United States Border Patrol. Congratulations on earning the Honor First Award. Thank you, Mr. Bravo Serrato. Please be seated. The graduates will now be presented with their graduation certificates and credentials, signifying that they have met the required qualifications needed to be a Border Patrol Processing Coordinator. I will now turn over the podium to Supervisory Border Patrol Agent Kenneth Greeno. Jesus Alvarez, Jr., McAllen Station. Sebastiana Arandando, McAllen Station.
Maria Ariaga McAllen Station. Presenting board, uh, Processing Coordinator Ariaga with her credentials is her husband, Supervisory Border Patrol Agent Eric Sanchez. Nubia Avalos, Yuma Station. Presenting Processing Coordinator Avalos with her credentials is her mother, Division Chief Nubia Bastidas Avalos. Nancy Barajas. You mistake. Angel Bravo Serato Laredo North Station. Ruby Castillo, McAllen Station. Abraham Chapa, Laredo North Station. Presenting Processing Coordinator Chapa with his credentials is his wife, Customs and Border Protection Officer Vanessa Barada Elder. Veronica Chavez, El Paso Station. Maria Esquer, El Paso Station. Aile Franco Avalos, Chula Vista Station. Diego Garcia Monzo, McAllen Station. Israel Garza, McAllen Station. Mirna Gursky, El Paso Station. Jessica Hernandez, El Paso Station. Joanna Hernandez, McAllen Station. Edwin Lopez, Laredo North Station. Jasmine Luna, El Paso Station. Carmen Makazan, Yuma Station. Mario Marquez, El Paso Station. Ismael Martinez, Yuma Station. Mariel Matos Diaz, Tucson Station. Rachel Moreno, El Paso Station.
Leonidas Navarro, El Paso Station. Erica Olveta, McAllen Station. Amy Palacios, El Paso Station. Eduardo Pacina, McAllen Station. Rosario Perez, Eagle Pass South Station. Presenting Processing Coordinator Perez with her credentials is her husband, Border Patrol Agent Miguel Perez. Jessica Perez Vilsec, McAllen Station. Olivia Prieto, El Paso Station. Adrian Ramos, Imperial Beach Station. Justin Richardson, McAllen Station. Eliel Rivas, McAllen Station. Daniel Rodriguez, Yuma Station. Javier Salazar Garza, McAllen Station. Graciela Saldana, McAllen Station. Felix Aldana Gonzalez, Yuma Station. Angel Segarra Martinez, Laredo North Station. Presenting Processing Coordinator Segarra Martinez with his credentials is his brother-in-law, Supervisory Border Patrol Agent Jorge Santiago. Eduardo Sepulveda, Yuma Station. Daniel Solis, McAllen Station. Frank Torres, McAllen Station. Sonia Trevino, Del Rio Station. Michelle Zertucci Valdez, McAllen Station. Graduates, please stand, prepare for the oath of office. Please raise your right hand, repeat after me. I. Aye. Aye. Jesus Alvarez. Sebastiana Redondo. Maya Arriaga. Rubio Avalo. Nancy Baraja. Ángel Bravo Serrato. Ruby Castillo. Abraham Chapa. Veronica Chavez. Maria Esquerra. Aide Franco Avalos. Leo Garcia Monzo. Israel Garza. Marna Kershka. Jessica Hernandez. Joanna Hernandez. Edwin Lopez. Jonathan Luna. Carmen Matasan. Mario Marquez. Ismael Martinez. Mariel Matos Diaz. Rachel Moreno. Gerardo Navarro. Erica Olvera. Amy Palacios. Eduardo Pesina. Rosario Perez. Jessica Perez Wilson. Olivia Prieto. Adrian Ramos. Justin Richardson. Eliel Rivas. Daniel Rodriguez. Javier Salazar Garza. Graciela Saldana. Felix Saldana Gonzalez. Ángel Segarra Martinez. Eduardo Sepúlveda. Daniel Solís. Frank Torres. Sonia Treviño. Michelle Sertucci. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? 
that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Coordinators, please be seated. In closing, I want to thank all of the family, friends, distinguished guests, and everybody for joining us in the celebration of this historic achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Al Uniform Personnel, David Smith. Yeah. Hey. It's the siege. <laughs> Woo. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. Turn me up a little more. I'm setting traps, I'm alone. You know you whack, I'm a maniac. Boy, you know I'm black to the bone. Pick a place, pick a date. I go go cool, pick a low. Thought you was good, huh? Take you out back, drag you through the woods, huh? Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? Give me that, where the city at? Nitty gritty, this ain't gonna be pretty, Jack. Not afraid, get up out the way. Y'all used to hate, look at what you made. When it all goes down, I'ma run this town. Fire in my soul, got my eyes on the ground. I can't help myself, lately, can't turn myself down. I'm in love with you, baby, but I let you down. I can't die. In this town, I won't die in this town. Yeah. Hey. Don't die in this town. Yeah. Get him up. I won't die in this town. Hold up, homie, let's wait a minute. Lately, y'all ain't even pay no visits. I can still hear the hate of critics. Saying he ain't gon' make it, is he? Lately, I developed laser vision. Yeah, I burn through people in their cruel intentions. Crazy, you tryna play me? Boy, you wouldn't even make the scrimmage. Get your f***ed up and pass up the limits. Got these new rappers looking vintage. All I really do is eat spinach. Count money up and hang with pretty women. I was driven, yeah, I had the vision. Then goon came along and made a vivid. Haters living cause we really living. I'm a freight train, you a Honda Civic. Hold up, wait, let me get specific. If you pick a mission and you stay committed, stop trans. And if you really listen, you'll see that big collision, just a big transition. When it all goes down, I'm gonna run this town. I in my soul, got my eyes on the ground. I can't help myself, baby, can't turn myself down. I'm in love with you, baby, but I let you down. I can't die in this town, I won't die in this town. Damn.